so much for coming. That's all you're getting tonight because we're going to have fish and chips so down at the bottom end pub, you know. And they could only see to us in quarter to eight, so ever so sorry. Will you come tomorrow? You're going to see a George Bernard Shaw play. Do you know anything about George Bernard Shaw? You're the rest of don't you? He was actually born in Ireland in the 1860s something or other. Do you remember who else was born in Ireland in 1860 something or other? Oh, Oscar! <laughs> anyway, anyway, he moved over, over to uh, to England. I expect I've written that in there, have I? I have to stop writing these things. Um, he didn't do very well, you know, Oscar Wilde. Uh, Oscar Wilde did beautiful. I like Oscar Wilde. George Bernard Shaw didn't do so well. He did. He couldn't get any of his plays on in the West End. Did you? Realize? I can put that in as well. Oh, yeah. uh, never mind. Pretend you haven't read it. I, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, right, so he couldn't get any plays put on in the West End. And the reason being that he had the firm belief that a play should be used like um, a, a, a political way of getting things over to an audience and improving the conditions for certain people. Like he wrote a play about prostitution. Well, can you imagine in London at that time even mentioning the word was enough? They just wanted beautiful things. Mr. Wilder got it sorted. He had all beautiful things in his plays, but he was getting something over, like the upper classes were twits, you know, nicely. So nobody objected to it. But Shaw thought he got to call a spade a spade, and so the censors hated him, and they wouldn't allow any of his plays to go on in the West End until he wrote this one, which he wrote particularly uh, for one lady whom he loved. I don't think she loved him, but um, he wrote it for Mrs. Patrick Campbell, who was the big actress of the time. And I love this story. Don't tell anybody else, but I, I love this story. He wrote it for her to play Eliza, and she was 49. <laughs> <laughs> and that's given me great joy for years. When I thought perhaps I'm a little bit too... Never mind, Mrs. Patrick Campbell was 49, playing a 19-year-old. Boy! Time for you yet, Sylvia. Um, but still, still they were a little nervous of it going into the West End until Beerbohm Tree, you might have heard of him, he was big in the theatre as well, and between the two of them they persuaded the censor to allow this play to go on in the West End. Now it's difficult, you know when for years you've thought something's a bit naughty or below you or you don't want to know, it's not entertaining, quite difficult to persuade people that it's all right. And so, and this is true, you take my word for it, don't you? This is true. Three weeks before opening night, they haven't sold any tickets. But would you go to a show that was going to embarrass you? No. Yes! Oh, who said that? In that corner somewhere. <laughs> Wonderful. Well then, this is what happened. And this, this is really true. This is what happened. There's a, a backstage workman, and he's just having a quiet whatever he was having in a corner, and he heard a, little, a wee bit of the rehearsal. And he heard a wee bit when Mrs. Patrick Campbell was saying, walk, not lightly. <laughs> she did. It's true. 1914, she said, not lightly. <laughs> and the word spread around London. He told his mates, mates told me, you know how it goes, until when it finally opened, it was packed. Everybody had come to see if Mrs. Patrick Campbell would say this word. Isn't that amazing? It's true. You believe me, don't you? Yes. Absolutely true. Now, I've got a girl who's, who's she's a little bit shy, and she's rather worried about this. But, Sylvia, what will they think if I say... I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll talk it over with them first, so get them ready. Okay. Now, I don't want... I, I know, you're such a refined audience. I'm very lucky. 
uh, particularly the ladies, the men are all right, they're all right. But the ladies, if you want to turn away or close your eyes or your ears, feel free. But then I thought, well, if anybody faints, you know, I'm not good at things like that, Joan, are you? Are you? Oh, well, you'll be all right then if you're near the front, Joan will look after you. We've only got one first aid man on. They cut him down, you know, <laughs> and everything. Money is, you know, you know how difficult it is, David, don't you? Anyway, I thought the way around this is to sort of get ease them into it gradually. You know what I mean? Get them used to it. So it's not, you understand, David, don't you? Yes, indeed, ma'am. Can you see me, darling? I can indeed, Except thank I you. Don't look up now and again and smile. Yes, please. Anyway, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you when it crops up in the play, and we'll just go over it once or twice to get you used to it. Now, if you think you're going to be able to shut your eyes or turn your head away, but I think you'll be all right once we've practiced. So there's a very nice looking young fella, and he says to Eliza, who isn't quite the lady yet, but is a third of the way along, and she's speaking beautifully, but doesn't always say the right things, you know. And he says, are you walking across the park, Miss Doolittle? So, fellas, will you just try that? You're about to join in. <laughs> I'm not paid for you to come to sit and do nothing. Come on. Are you ready, gentlemen? Are you walking across the park, Miss Doolittle? Good. Now, what's the response? Yeah. Walk. Girls, get ready. We'll say there was a quiet, they don't be shocked. <laughs> Ooh, not running like a Who brought this lady? <laughs> Do it quiet, you don't want to shock them, do you? Not running like Right, let's try it then. Are you ready, gentlemen? <laughs> Are you walking across the park, Miss Doolittle? Walk. Shall we try it again? <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit louder this time, you ready? I am walking across the park, Miss Doolittle. Walk, not bloody like <laughs> Oh, wonderful! Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I, I, I've just had another thought. You see, Eliza is in dressing rooms right down there somewhere, three floors down. She won't have heard. She'll be worrying. Come and do it again. Take it. <laughs> well, you can. Project. Yeah? Are you ready? She's three floors down. She won't come on if we don't do it. You ready? I'm walking across the park, Mrs. Unicorn. Whoa! 